everyone, welcome. I'm Vera, London-based nature-inspired abstract artist. So nice to have you here with me today as part of my weekly video series that I'm doing for 2018 where I share a little bit more about my life as an artist, what I'm currently working on, and some behind-the-scenes peeks of my inspiration and some of my influences. So this week, we're at the end of January now, and it's um, it's sort of a bumper week for me because uh, my birthday's coming up very shortly. So because of that, I'm doing sort of a special birthday treat both to myself and hopefully for you as well if you're enjoying these video series. This week, I um, had a chance to kind of see some art exhibitions around town that I've been meaning to see for quite a while that are closing very soon. So yesterday, I went to see the Basquiat exhibition and I posted a video about some of my thoughts on that the Basquiat at the Barbican Center it was amazing if you have a chance to go see it this is the final week you should definitely should and today I'm back in the studio continuing work on my weaving series you might remember that at the end of last year I did three brand new mixed media artworks that I called part of my um, woven contemplation series and it was all about being inspired by textiles, the, the history of them, the comfort of them, the, the look of them, and just physically the weaving aspect of them. And I did a few of those, well I did three of those, and they all sold last year um, to very very happy collectors, and I thought well why not do a few more? It's, it's sort of a direction I'm going towards I suppose, um, revisiting some of my ink on watercolor work. As you know, I work in a couple of different key media. One is ink on watercolor, and one of watercolor paper, rather. And then the other one is acrylic and other sort of mixed media, but really acrylic on canvas. And you can see maybe a couple of those hanging in the studio. So this is the first part of the process. Um, you might be able to see maybe in front of me, I have kind of the, the final, raw material, if we can call it that. And these are strips of watercolor paper that has been sort of torn um, to have these deckled edges and has been, has been painted over, then has been textured. Let me just show you this, you might get a better look. You can see some of this texture in addition to the paint. Once it's dried, then I've applied additional paint in the form of pencil and some paint pen to get some of these extra effects. So this is really the raw material that this big roll is going to turn into. And then once I have all the raw materials and the colors that I want to work with, that's when actually the weaving process starts. But as you can imagine, it's quite a kind of labor intensive process to do all those different steps and they all just, you know, take their time and kind of they have their moment. But here, this is where I start out, where I start out with the watercolor paper. And then I literally, this might seem sort of like craft hour when you're back in school, but I literally fold it and then tear it into strips. And then early on, I kind of realized that, well, it's one of these things where when you do a new piece of artwork that you haven't really done before, it takes quite a while to experiment and to figure out all the details of how you actually want it to look. And it might seem to somebody else that these are all kind of minor details. In reality, they're not. I think as the artist, you have a very clear vision of what you want to do. As the artist, you have a very clear idea of when something looks good and when something could look better. And part of the experimentation process when you first start a new series of work is to figure out what you want. So in this case, there's quite a few different aspects that I tried before I kind of committed to the, doing the first three weavings last year. And one of them, it might sound elementary, is literally how do you make the paper strips? Well, there's two steps, uh, two stages rather. So the first one is, initially I thought, okay, it's um, actually a lot less time consuming to literally just paint one big sheet of paper and then cut that because Painting one big sheet of paper, you have all the inks going, you have all the kind of different materials at the same time. There's a much bigger space to work and you can be much more kind of free. So it is easier. But then when I did that, I thought actually, um, I don't think the final effect is as, as uh, good. 
because in these strips, everything that happens on these strips is self-contained. You know, all the texture, all the additional detail is self-contained within these strips. So these strips in themselves are almost like mini works of art. Whereas if you do the other approach, where you start out with a big piece of paper, you paint that, and then you effectively cut that, a lot of these sort of lines and curves will be cut off. And um, I just didn't think that was effective, as effective as this approach. So now, like I say, after all the experimentation, I decided, okay, the way to go is cut the strips first. The other aspect, again, it might seem like a detail, but it's actually not, is how do you actually cut the strips? Initially, I thought, well, clearly the easiest way to cut them is kind of a blade type thing, you know, um, one of these kind of knife, uh, cardboard cutters rather, craft knife, scissors, that type of thing. But then I realized quite quickly that that creates a very clear and sharp line, which normally is good, normally is what you want with those types of materials. But in my case, I thought that it's not, it's, it, it doesn't complement, I suppose, the organic and raw nature of textiles in general, and it doesn't complement the organic and raw nature of the textile inspired artwork that I was trying to create. I actually thought that the edges being so clean cut was too mechanical. It didn't, it didn't have that sort of handmade texture feel. So then I thought, okay, actually the, the only way really to do it and again, it is more time uh, kind of um, intensive, but that's, you know, that's the, <laughs> that's the nature of the game, I suppose, is to do it this way, where, like I say, it's a bit like when you're in school and you're dividing craft paper or whatnot, where you literally fold it in half and, you know, you apply pressure in some way, and then you get the paper to fold, and then you carefully Tear it. So you have this deckled edge, which I think looks much more, like I say, organic, raw, um, and sort of interesting. So there we have it. Um, that's really the first stage of the process. So this takes, honestly, quite a while. I think, you know, sometimes people have this idea with art that everything you do is super creative and super fun, and you're in love with every part of the process. I don't think that's true. I think the reality is like it's anything else. There's elements that are particularly creative. There's elements that are less creative. There's elements which are actually quite repetitive, like this, you know, turning all these papers into little strips takes a long time. And it's, uh, you know, it's not super fun to constantly be tearing and folding and pressing and tearing, but it is a necessary part of the process. It's the first step of the process of creating the artwork. And at the end of the day, you sort of find your own rhythm. Um, oftentimes, well, always, I sort of listen to music, particularly when I'm doing something like this, that you sort of just go off into your own little world and you just, you know, you crack on with doing the, the paper strips. And then the other thing I wanted to point out is in terms of the paper that I use, there's lots of different watercolor papers. It, first of all, it does have to be, and in my case, it always is, um, artist quality, archival, acid-free. Those are sort of the key three words that we talk about. We talk about paper that you use for a work of art. And that means that it won't get yellow over time. And it just, it's, um, it, it, it's a much, much better product for artwork that you expect to last kind of hundreds of years rather than just sort of standard craft paper. There's, there's no comparison. But then even within the world of artist quality, acid-free, archival watercolor papers. There's a huge variety, there's lots of different brand names. They all have sort of their, their advantages. Um, in my case, I tend to use a lot of Fabriano. It's a specific paper manufacturer based in Italy who's been going for sort of donkey's years. I think it's multiple hundreds of years. And they do these amazing papers. It comes in three different textures. You have the really kind of pressed, which is actually quite smooth. You have the intermediate, and then you have the rough. So in my case, you know, I use both. You can see that this is the two ends of the scale. Maybe you can see, I'm not sure. Um, let me just show you, maybe this is a better idea. Actually, yeah, this is a better idea. 
So these are two ends of the scale. On this side you have the really flat paper, and on this side you have the really textured paper. And you can probably tell, certainly you can tell in real life there's quite a difference. Even though they're classified as the same um, weight, GSM, sort of gram per squared meter, in terms of the paper, but they do have different textures. And that means that in terms of how they interact with all the inks, is also quite different. And that's part of the fun for me, to mix and match and to combine them. So that's, that's it. Um, like I say, I use a lot of the Fabriano paper, not exclusively, I suppose, because sometimes I think there's, um, there's interest in variety, but mainly, so all of this behind me is Fabriano, all of this in front of me is Fabriano um, paper, which, yeah, I just love. I think it's particularly really high quality. So that's it for me for this week then. Just wanted to share with you um, sort of what I'm working on. And like I say, the initial stages, when these are some strips that I created earlier to give you a bit of an example also, but these are the initial stages, like I say. I take the, the kind of raw paper and then tear them up into strips and then kind of the painting and texturing and overpainting begins, which I'll share in one of the later videos. So thank you very, very much for joining me this week. Um, hopefully this week because they are kind of two different videos you know one was for an art exhibition and the other one is a behind the scenes peek of my studio what I'm working on hopefully they're they're interesting to you and you find them um, sort of inspiring in terms of maybe you're working on something or making progress in your own projects whether they're creative or kind of work or life or what have you so end of January I know for many people January is a difficult month um, but you know, that we're just around the corner, so onwards, upwards and onwards. And thank you again for joining me for this video series. I've, I really appreciate all the feedback and all the love that you've given me. It's amazing to know that there's people who are interested in what I do and who love to see a bit more about what I do and how I do it and why. So thanks again, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I hope you have a lovely, lovely week. And I will see you next time. In the meantime, if you want to connect with me, whether it's in real life at the Wimbledon Art Studios or whether it's on social media, I'm always Vera Vera on the wall. That's sort of my social media handle. So I hope to see you again next week. And thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much. Bye.